in continuation of the lease valuation there are certain other issues that can be faced by the lesser and the lessee while valuing their lease contracts the first issue is the usage of discount rate that is used for determining the npv of the lease contract when we talk about lessee lessee may use discount rate other than the discount rate used by the lesser and lessee also may use discount rate that is after tax discount rate as the discount rate for determining net present value of its lease contract now the question arises why to use after tax interest rate as the discount rate there are two reasons because as uh, we see that a lender pay tax on the interest income he earns under a contract of borrowing therefore it receives its net return as after tax return so far as the borrower is concerned a borrower can deduct interest payments as expense in its income statement so what is then the net cost of borrowing to the borrower to determine net cost of borrowing to the determine it is then necessary to deduct the taxable portion of the interest expense that is why we call it then as after tax borrowing cost then after tax interest rate it is the effective rate to transfer debt equivalent flows from one time period to another time period this means that to uh, equalize a debt amount under the borrowing contract we need to use after tax discount rate so that we can determine present value of each period covered under the borrowing contract for that purpose on the screen you can see that we have uh, used 6.5% as the discount rate which is the after tax discount rate and it gives a net present value of minus 700 to the lessee this means that the borrowing to the lessee in this case is an expensive item under a borrowing contract than a lease contract we also see that a stand alone positive or negative npv is not sufficient we have to use a certain other criteria along with the resulting npv for that purpose we have a comparative npv amounts which we create on the basis for final decision of our choice we can say that we have to determine npv under lease contract and npv under a loan contract then we need to compare npv of the lease contract with the npv of the loan contract and and if npv under lease contract is better than npv under loan contract then the loan option seems better for that purpose if we see on the screen we can see that we have a lease cash flows chart that display of cash flows from 0 to 7 years and in the lower half we have an equivalent loan to the lease that is offered to the lessee we can see that in this chart we have amount borrowed which is 89.72 as an initial cost of the asset we have interest at 10 percent we have interest tax shield which is 35 percent these interest tax shield is offered to the borrower then we have interest payment after tax and we then have our repayment of principal in other words we can call this schedule as a loan amortization schedule and finally we have the annual cash flows under this borrowing contract for the full seven years how value of lease can be determined uh, in fact we need to determine incremental values these uh, that are relative to the borrowing via an equivalent loans uh, this means we need to determine additional amount of cash flows then a positive lease value means that if you acquire an, an asset then lease financing is advantageous and the vice versa we can see but that does not mean that asset should be acquired 
uh, in fact a financial lease is superior to buying or borrowing if the lease financing exceeds the equivalent loan financing this means uh, we can summarize this in the way that the net present value of a financial lease contract should be in excess to the net present value of a borrowing contract in this regard we have another little exercise we have a best bus manufacturer that is offering routine maintenance at a cost of $2,000 and the bus is estimated to fetch $10,000 after 8 years with this data we can determine the net present value of our lease term that we are discussing in our examples now see that we have negative 700 NPV of the lease then we have to determine the present value of the annual maintenance cost which is offered to the lessee and we have uh, to determine present value of the salvage value this is a negative amount here because previously we assume zero value at the end of the project life so the lessee is here at loss of this salvage value now when we determine the net present value of this lease contract it comes to six thousand and four hundred dollars now we see that the lease which was earlier fetching a negative seven hundred dollars for the lessee is now offering him a positive net value of sixty four thousand dollars so in this way we can see that this lease now seems much better in fact a lease contract may be unattractive owing to some less financing than the equivalent loan to make an attractive option for the lessee there may be certain evaluation and other additions that can be considered like any routine maintenance or insurance expense offered by the lesser to the lessee or any salvage value at the end of the life of the asset that the assessee can have we can also determine benefits under financial lease both for the lessee and the lesser uh, so far as benefits to the lesser are concerned uh, we need to remember that if tax it is similar for the lessee and the lesser then no one will have any benefit under, under the financial lease contract in this case the cash outflows from the lessee will be similar to the cash inflows to the lesser just there would be the change of signs like in this example on the screen we see that for lesser the net value present value of the lease is plus 700 but for the lessee the same equation when worked with reverse sign it resulted in a net present value of negative 700 therefore the uh, net benefit of plus 700 for the lesser and negative 700 for the lessee yields nothing for any of the two but the lesser can win under financial lease contract in a case if the tax rate differs for both of the lesser and the lessee value of the lease to the lessee the how it can be determined to get benefit under financial lease by a lessee it is necessary that the tax rules should differ for the lessee and the lesser only then both of lessee and the lesser can win in this type of financial lease contract for example let assume there is no tax for the lessee then how it will work on the screen we can see that the cash flow pattern would be look like this for a hundred dollars cost of a new asset there is an annual lease payment of 16.9 when we discount back these cash flows to their present value at the cost of 10 percent which is opportunity cost to the lessee and this is when after tax is also the 10 percent because in this case we assume no tax rate for the lessee so discounting these cash flows at 10 percent cost of capital the resulting npv is 820 dollars so we see that under financial is where the lessee is 
under no tax burden there is a net gain of 700 dollar to the lesser because of tax shield on interest expense and, and, and depreciation and there is a net gain of 820 to the lessee under the same lease contract because lessee is re not required to pay any tax this mutual gain in this lease contract earned by the lessee and the lesser is at the expense of the government uh, because the government gains from lease contract through tax on lease payments the, this lease contract allows tax yield on depreciation and interest expense to the lesser and these tax yields are of no use for the lessee uh, also the accelerated depreciation and positive interest rate gives a net loss to the government in the present value of tax shield as a result of the lease contract a collective or combined gains for the lesser and the lessee will be higher if the lesser's tax rate is much much higher than the lessee's tax rate and depreciation is a uh, depreciation tax yield is received early in the lease period uh, lease period is longer enough and the lease payments are widely concentrated towards the end of the lease contract and the interest rate under the lease contract is much higher finally we have an other type of lease contract and that is leveraged lease uh, under leveraged lease contract the leasing company set up an another company that, uh, that is known as a special purpose entity this special purpose entity uh, is required to borrow funds from the market and to these borrow funds the leasing company contributes some amount as its own equity now the special purpose entity uses this collective amount for the purchase of the asset in the market and the lease contract is placed with the borrower as a collateral to the loan now what happens afterwards uh, we can see that the leasing company gets no cash inflows because now the role of lesser is placed is played by the uh, uh, special purpose entity and the lessee makes periodic payments to this special purpose entity and with these periodic lease payments the special purpose entity serves its debt it pays interest and principal to the borrower uh, when the debt is paid off uh, the the asset reverts back to the to the lessee this relationship between the lessee between special purpose entity and the company can a leasing company can be seen in this uh, diagram where there is a lessee who is taking an asset on the lease it make lease payments to the special purpose entity that uses this series of payment as a debt service to the buyer so far as the tax shields on depreciation and interest expense is there it goes to the leasing company who is also contributing towards the fund for the acquisition of the asset